Wow, it's great to, to be inside with you all. I, I'm a little jealous. I think we can see the folks outside. That may be the place to be this morning. Hello, folks. They'll uh, keep filling up there. Beautiful day there. And for the folks that are watching online, welcome. Um, we're just glad to have you with us. Hey, do you mind if I tell you the most unbelievable story that I've ever heard? Would that be all right? Well, it happened a long, long time ago in a place far, far away. And there was this, this young girl, this teenage girl. She was about 15 years old, and her name was Mary. And she was already engaged to be married to, to a little older guy who was a really nice guy. His name was Joseph. And he was kind of a salt-of-the-earth guy. He was a, a blue-collar kind of craftsman. Now, um, they were pretty traditional back in those days. They, they waited until they were actually married to have sex, and so that's a little different than uh, some people these days. But you can only imagine the scandal when young Mary turned up pregnant. People assumed that it was Joseph's baby, but it wasn't. It wasn't. And so he was crushed. He, he, he loved her deeply. He, he had longed to spend the rest of his life with her to build a family together. And all those hopes and dreams were dashed. Who was the father? Well, Mary claimed that it was God himself, which is unbelievable, isn't it? And not only that, she claimed that she was still a virgin, which, uh, I, I mean, I'm no doctor, but I know enough about how babies are made that that is impossible. That is absolutely impossible. And Joseph, he was no dummy either. He didn't believe it either. And he said no. And he decided that he was just going to break it off quietly because he didn't want to bring any more shame to her. He didn't want to bring any more shame to himself. But that night when he went to sleep, an angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Joseph, it's all right. The baby that is inside of Mary, that is growing within her, is the Son of God is the son of God. And so you're to marry Mary. And then when the baby is born, you're to give him the name Jesus, which means God saves. God saves. So Joseph, being a good God-fearing guy, he did what the, the angel said, and, and he married her, and he took her home, but he did not consummate the marriage until after Jesus was born, which may be the most unbelievable part of the story so far, right? The, uh, so that was the case. Now, Finally, it came time for, for Mary to give birth. And you would think that if, if God is really the father, that he would have a nice clean house or hospital for her to go to to deliver the baby, since it is his son, actually. But no, she gave birth in a barn of all places. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. More unbelievable things started happening. An angel appeared to some lowly shepherds out in the field and announced the birth of the Son of God. And they listened and obeyed and went and saw things just like the angel had predicted. Not only that, but at that very moment when Jesus was born, a bright star appeared in the sky. And people took notice. Some wise men, some rich guys from the far east, they noticed, and they packed up some of their belongings, they got their crew together, and they headed on a long journey that took nearly two years to get there, to bring expensive gifts to this newborn king of the Jews. Now, it, it took a while, and then finally they arrived, and when they did, they bowed down, and they began to worship this, this toddler now, and, and gave him these expensive gifts. They didn't stay long, and they were on their way home, and they decided to go back a different route. Because on their way, they had an encounter with Herod, who was the king of the, king of the um, Romans there. And, and Herod felt threatened by this baby, and he asked these, these wise men, if you will, once you find him, come back and tell me. Tell me exactly where he is, because I want to go and worship him. But he didn't, did he? He wanted to kill him. Well, guess what happened that night? Joseph goes to bed again, and an angel appears to him. Unbelievable. And, and the angel tells him that he needs to get Mary and, and Jesus and all their belongings and head to Egypt. And so he did. Unbelievable. And at that time, Herod ordered the death of every child that was two years old or younger. 
they stayed in Egypt for some period of time. I'm not exactly sure how many years they were there until King Herod died. And then one night, Joseph was asleep, and guess what happened again? Another angel appears. Unbelievable, right? And says, guess what? Herod is dead. It's safe for you to go back. Go back home. And so he does. Now, we don't know too much about... Um, the early life of Jesus as a child. This, this is what we do know, is that um, supposedly he was sinless. That, that this young boy never sinned. Now that's unbelievable, isn't it? Right? Like anybody have a toddler? You know, you know like have you ever been around a two-year-old and, and not seen them throw a tantrum because they didn't get their way? Right? Or, or how about um, a young boy who doesn't fight with his siblings or fight with the neighbors or have you ever experienced a, a teenage boy who's going through puberty and, and they've not lusted after a girl or, or said or done something stupid, right? It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable that Jesus lived a sinless life, that he was perfect. But that's what they say. Now, he, he grew up in... Um, he followed in Joseph's footsteps. He, he became a craftsman of his own. But then when he was 30 years old, when he was 30 years old, he set out. See, he believed he was no ordinary man. In fact, he believed that he was God in the flesh. Unbelievable. He, he, he even believed that the, the prophets of old had been pointing to him that he would be the savior of the world, that he would take away the sin of mankind. So he, he leaves the comforts of his home and he, he goes about the countryside. This would be modern day Israel and, and Jordan. And um, he, he's preaching and teaching about the kingdom of God and what it is like. And then he's also calling people to repentance, to repent or to turn away from their sinful desires and, and ways and to turn back to God. Now think about the claims that he made. Can you imagine if somebody today made those very same claims? You'd think he was a liar, right? Or, or you'd think he's a lunatic. You would never follow a man like that, would you? But guess what? People did. People did. They dropped everything and they followed him. Crowds would gather wherever he was speaking because he spoke with authority. He spoke with confidence. We're told that he even performed miracles. That at a wedding in Cana of Galilee, he turned water into wine. That's unbelievable. Unbelievable. That he healed the sick, the lame, the blind. That he even claimed to forgive sins. Something that only God himself can do. It's unbelievable. We're even told that he fed thousands and thousands of people with just a couple small fish and a few small loaves of bread. And if you can believe that, we're told that he even raised dead people to life. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Now, you would think that, that everyone would, would love Jesus, wouldn't you? But they didn't. Part of it, I think, is because his goodness shone so brightly that it illuminated people's sinfulness. And nobody likes their sin to be illuminated, right? And so some people hated him because of that. He made a claim. He said that I am the way and the truth and the source, the only source of true and everlasting life. And that claim is arrogant, isn't it? It is arrogant. And people were offended by it. Not only that, but some thought it was blasphemous. Blasphemous. And so what we see um, happening was, was the Roman government leaders joined forces with the religious leaders. And they came together to put Jesus to death. They made up all these, these lies about him, these, these false accusations. They, they grabbed him. They had a, a, a joke of a trial in the middle of the night of all times. They, they got false witnesses, and, and then they convicted him of, of crimes that 
He didn't commit. They mocked him. And they beat him. They spit upon him. They whipped him to within an inch of his life. And then they forced him to carry his own cross up a hill until he collapsed under the weight of it. Eventually, somebody helped him get to the top. And when he reached the top, they spread him out on that cross, pulled his arms apart, put a nail through his hands, crossed his feet, put a nail through his feet. Then they raised up his cross, dropped it in a hole right between two convicted thieves. It was agony. And he suffered there. It took all he could to just push himself up so that he could get a breath. And eventually he just didn't have the strength any longer. And he died. He died of suffocation. That's how he died. Now, the fact that he died by crucifixion in such a terrible, awful way is not unbelievable. It's not. Because many people were crucified. That is not the unbelievable part. What, what was unbelievable in the midst of that? As he's hanging on the cross, he, he looks at the people. And he says, Father, forgive them. Because they don't know what they're doing. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. And towards the end of his, his life, the, in that, that moment, it, it turned pitch dark. And an eclipse of sorts fell a, a, across the world. And then he breathed his last and he said, it is finished. And with that, he, he released his spirit and he died. And the earth shook. The earth shook. It shook so hard that there was this curtain, this thick curtain in the temple that separated the people from what was called the Holy of the Holies, the Holy of Holies. And that's the presence of God. And so that curtain ripped from top to bottom. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. They took him down off the cross and they put him in a tomb. And then they rolled this big old stone in, in front of it. And then they, they positioned some Roman guards, some centurions there, to make sure that nobody came and disturbed the body. Now after three days, on the third day, these women that were followers of his, they came with some herbs and spices to properly prepare his dead and decaying body. But when they arrived, they found that the stone had already been rolled away. They looked inside, and what they saw was amazing. It, it looked as if his body had just raised up through the burial cloths. They were just lying there perfectly, and he was not there. They were confused. They were frightened. And then some angels appear to them. Unbelievable. And the angel says, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He's not here. He's risen. Remember. Remember when he was with you in Galilee how he said, I must be handed over to sinful men. I will be crucified and on the third day rise again. Remember that. And off they went. They went running to uh, the disciples who were hiding behind locked doors. Um, on the, the journey back, Mary Magdalene had this personal encounter with the risen Jesus. Unbelievable. And then as she made her way back into the room with the disciples, Jesus just appeared there. He appeared to them in that moment. Unbelievable. We're, not only that, but we're told over the next 40 days, he appeared to them and met with them multiple times. Not only them, but over 500 people. There were over 500 eyewitnesses of the risen Jesus Christ. It's unbelievable, isn't it? It is unbelievable. It's the most unbelievable story I've ever heard. You know what else was, was unbelievable? Was that uh, it began to change everything. On, on day 40, 
the disciples said that they, they physically saw Jesus ascend into heaven in bodily form. And then on day 50, they said the Holy Spirit descended upon them, that all the believers or followers of Jesus received his spirit, and they were forever changed. They, these guys and, and these ladies who were cowering behind locked doors for fear for their lives now took to the streets, and they began proclaiming everything that Jesus had said and done, the good news that he offered. History tells us that, that um, they dedicated their lives to this that they would go and, and they would travel around the world telling people of Jesus, starting churches. History also tells us that these people suffered agonizing and awful deaths because they were unwilling. They were unwilling to turn their backs on Jesus. They, they would not, they would not Counterdict their faith. Something unbelievable happened in their lives that changed them forever. Now, we're 2,000 years or so since then. And isn't it unbelievable that millions of people are gathered around the world today in churches like this celebrating the resurrection of Jesus? I think that's unbelievable. But here's the thing, at least half of the folks that are gathered like us are no different than the folks that didn't gather. At least half of us don't really believe that Jesus was who he said he was. We don't believe that Jesus did what others said he did. We don't believe this unbelievable story. We don't. Now, we may have gotten dressed up this morning we may have come to church. We may even have a, a nice lunch or dinner plan with friends and family members. But the reality is, we don't believe it. We don't believe it. We don't. See, if we believe this unbelievable story, it would change everything. See, Jesus didn't expect everybody to believe it. He, he actually expected very few people to believe in him and to follow him. He said things like this, enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter by it are many, are many, for the gate is narrow and the way is hard. It is a hard way that leads to life. And those who find it are few. He, he said on another occasion, he said, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. See, it, it's no wonder that the majority of the world and over half the people that have gathered together in churches like ours don't believe this unbelievable story. Because if we really, truly believed it, it would change everything. If we believed it, it would change everything. It would, it would change the way we spend our time. It would change the way we spend our money. If you really believe this story, it would change who you date. It would change who you marry. It would change who you go into business with. It would change what you believe. It would change how you act. It would, it would change the stands that you take. It would change the advice that you give. It would change the, the things that you like on social media. Everything would change if you really believed this. It would change your relationships, especially your relationship with God. And it would change your eternity. And it would change the eternity of many people that are close to you. But most of us don't believe it. We don't believe it. Because the reality is that tomorrow isn't going to be that much different than last Monday. And we're not going to read our Bibles anymore. We're not going to pray anymore, talking to God, listening to God. We're not going to join a life group or a small group Bible study. And, you know, by next Sunday, things should be back to normal. You know, we'll, we'll be able to sleep in, maybe do some yard work, 
maybe we'll find ourselves on the ball fields or on the golf course or in the dance studio. Everything will be back to normal because we don't really believe this. Because if we did, it would change everything. You know, for the first 22 years of my life, I didn't believe this unbelievable story. But then I had a personal encounter with, with God, with Jesus, and it changed everything. And it, it began to change me. And, and not only did I have one encounter, but then I had regular encounters, these unbelievable encounters with God. And, and not only that, but, but God, through the power of his Holy Spirit, began to open my mind to this unbelievable story, open my eyes to see things that I didn't see before because what I was able to do as I looked back over my life at this point, I could see how God was at work already before I ever acknowledged him and he was doing unbelievable things in my life and he was ordering things that I couldn't see. H have any of you guys had an unbelievable encounter with God? Raise your hand if you've had an unbelievable encounter with God. A lot. And for those of you who, who haven't raised your hand, I got to believe you want to have an unbelievable encounter with God, don't you? I mean, isn't that something that you long for? Well, I want to tell you that's available to you. There, there are examples throughout history of people who have had these encounters. There are so many examples right in this room. There, there's one encounter that uh, Mark wrote down, and it was between Jesus and, and this, this father. This man had, had um, a son who had been demon-possessed from birth. And, and most of you guys don't believe that, right? Like, that's weird stuff. You don't believe in demons and stuff. But I'm telling you, it's true. And so th this, this father had this son, and, and this demon would, would often cause him to um, go into convulsions. And the demon was trying to kill him, would sometimes throw him into fire. And this man sought out all the help, all the treatment he could get, and yet his son was still tormented. Finally, as a last resort, he turned to Jesus. And, and listen to the, um, the, the uh, dialogue that the two of them had. This is just a, a brief snippet of it. So the, the father asks Jesus, he says, But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. If you could do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, If you can, if you can, all things, all things are possible for one who believes. All things are possible for one who believes. And then listen to this. It says, immediately the father and child cried out and said, I believe. Help my unbelief. I believe. Help my unbelief. And I think that is every one of our cries. Like, I, I think... We all need help with our unbelief. This is an unbelievable story. Okay, it is an unbelievable story. And we need help with our unbelief. And, and here's, here's my plea. Don't allow your unbelief to keep you from coming to Jesus. Do not allow your unbelief to keep you from coming to Jesus. Just come to him like that, that father did and said, I believe. But help me with my unbelief. Because this is an unbelievable story. We're going to have an opportunity here in the next few minutes for you to just think about what you've heard and um, consider what difference that might make in your life. What might it look like if you truly do believe? I'm going to encourage you to just pray. You can pray where you are or you can pray at the rail. We're going to have folks that would love to pray with you and for you up here. Um, if you're online, you can um, go into the chat part, and, and they'll pray for you there. If you're out back, if you go to my left, there's going to be prayer people over there for you guys too. Um, but I would encourage you for the next couple minutes, maybe just seek God, consider what you've heard, and ask him. Ask him, Jesus, I would love to have an unbelievable encounter with you. Holy Spirit, open up my mind to believe this unbelievable story. Open up my eyes to see how you've been working in unbelievable ways already in my life. Because I don't believe you're here by accident. I believe God has a purpose that he has brought you here. 
Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you so much for this unbelievable story. And while we all may have some doubts and, and unbelief, Lord, I thank you that you're bigger than that, that you can overcome that. And I, I pray that we would not allow our unbelief or our questions to keep us from coming to you. Lord, we're all a work in progress. We all have to grow. And so I thank you that you're not threatened by our unbelief. I thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit to open up our mind's eyes and to open up our hearts and, and just to change our lives. I thank you for the way that you've done that in my own life. And I know that you've done that in so many others here too. Lord, help us. Help us to believe this unbelievable story. We ask it all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.